a little bit more to this to have an example of like short circuiting. So um, we'll say this is an example of a short circuit. I'm gonna show you two examples of a short circuit because often we use a short circuit in a way that's productive, lets us write more concise code, helps us do better things. Um, however, sometimes short circuit can uh, inadvertently lead to a bug and I'm gonna show you that as well. Um, we're gonna do one example with and and another with or. Um, conceptually, they're the same, but I think it's helpful to see an example of each. So let's focus on and first. So here, here's, here's what a short circuit is for an AND. We're gonna make it really precise. For an AND operation, if the left operand, which is the one we evaluate first, if it is false, the right operand will not be evaluated. We're not even gonna execute that code. Okay. Totally skip it. Why? Well, this is because we have already determined the AND operation will be false. If the left operand is false, it doesn't matter what the right operand is. There's no way the overall expression can be true anymore. Okay, because in order to be true, both the left and the right operands have to be true. So if the left is already false, we don't even need to look at the right. We're not even gonna execute that code. We're just gonna um, skip right over that block and move on. We can leverage this behavior to our example by writing code like this. So you may remember we have this variable first str. It's been set to either string one or string two based on which one comes first. But if the two strings are equal, it's still gonna have the value of null. Okay. So let's say we wanna print a message um, if the length of first str, first str dot length is greater than three. If we were to write code just like this and the two strings were equal and therefore first str is null, this code would crash with a null pointer exception. A reminder, a null pointer exception occurs when we invoke a method like length on a variable like first str whose value is null. So we don't wanna do this. We could wrap this in a whole nother if block or we can take advantage of short circuiting. We can say if first str is not equal to null and first str dot length is greater than or equal to three, then we'll print some useful message like the first string has more than three characters. This is an example of using that short circuit behavior to our advantage. This won't even execute if this is true. Let's do a second example. But in the second example, we're gonna to switch to an or. So we'll, we'll document what this means for an or. So we'll say, this is another short, not shirt, short circuit, circuit example. And now we'll phrase this for an or. So for an or operation, if the left operand is true, the right operand will not be evaluated. So conceptually, this is the same thing, even though we switched the and to an or and the false to a true, the reasoning is the same. Why do we not even evaluate the right operand? This is because we have already determined the OR operation will be true. So an OR operation is true if either operand is true. So if we already know the left operand is true, who cares about the right operand? It's not gonna change anything. So we're not even gonna evaluate that code. 
And while that can be used to our advantage, it can also lead to some unexpected behavior. So we'll have to write a few lines of code here to show off the unexpected behavior. So we're gonna add more to this method. We're gonna prompt the user to enter their two favorite fruits. So I'm gonna do system.out.print. A little bit of scanner review here. Enter your two favorite fruits. Um, and then we're gonna write code a little bit more like I showed you yesterday with um, the, the fourth part of that programming activity where I'm invoking multiple methods in the same line of code. And I can do that because those methods return references to other objects. And so I'm gonna write the code kind of like this. So rather than like reading um, and storing the values in a variable, I'm just gonna do it in a single line of code to check if they type in the fruit kiwi. I'm gonna say if s.next, because s is our scanner object, it's defined up above. Um, so read the next word if it equals Kiwi, or, so that's, the, if the first word equals Kiwi, this will be true, or if the second word equals Kiwi, this will also be true. So if either word is Kiwi, we're gonna print a little message. System.out.println, yum, Kiwis. I don't know, that works. Let's ask them another question. Let's say enter your favorite ice cream flavor. We'll store that in a variable. And then we'll simply print favorite ice cream, and we'll add flavor into that. There we go. All right, so here's what I'd like you to try for the next couple of minutes. Certainly finish typing it, compile it, run it. I want you to type in your two favorite fruits as long as the, the first one you type in isn't kiwi, and then your ice cream and see how the program behaves. Then I want you to pretend that your first favorite fruit is kiwi and type in kiwi, and see how the program behaves. And then try to figure out why. Why is the program behaving unexpectedly in the second case? And I'll give you a couple of minutes to do that, and then we'll, we'll touch base. Page, and we'll do some peer instruction. So these are the old words. Okay, two favorite fruits. Let's say my first favorite fruit is kiwi, and my second is banana. I hit enter, it says yum, kiwis. Okay, that's expected. But then it asks me to enter my favorite ice cream flavor, but it didn't wait. It never gave me a chance. It just said my favorite ice cream flavor is banana. I think that's disgusting. I don't like banana ice cream. I mean, if you do, no, I'm not judging, that's cool. Um, but I don't like banana ice cream. So the question is why? Why is this not behaving the way we expect? And it all has to do with short circuiting. Right, we're do we're calling the next call right here in this expression, and so we're reading the next word from the terminal. And if it equals kiwi, if this is true, this code never executes. We never read the second word. It's sitting there waiting in the stream. And so when we prompt for the ice cream flavor and we call next again, scanner's like, "Oh, I've got the next word for you. Here it is, banana." Um, because we never read it the first time. So that's what we got to watch out for. That's the potential issue we can have with this short circuit behavior. Thank you, thank you.